Hi, Ian Iberg. You are a founder at Nano VMs. VMs, but actually, uh, as I read a bit about your company, you're into unikernels. T tell me a bit about that. So Union kernels, at the end of the day, they come provisioned as virtual machines, but they're inherently different because they don't have operating systems as we generally think of them as. Meaning management's kind of a pain in the butt. You don't necessarily have the ability to SSH into this thing or and so on. And so is that the problem you guys are solving? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the management's really the issue. It's more of um, how do you actually create these damn things? Because if you're not a systems level engineer, you probably aren't using Union kernels today unless you're using software like ours. Okay, so you're into the creation of the yeah, unikernel. It's kind of like, like like a formula. You got to uh, uh, say what's going to be in this unikernel, what are the support systems, yep. what's it going to have, what's it not going to have, yep. and then produce it. So we've actually gone a step further. If you look at most unikernel implementations out there, there's well over 10 of them now. Um, most every single one of them requires source code to operate. What we've done is we can now load raw Linux binaries as a unikernel, which makes support way the hell easier, and we can even run third-party software like SQL Server as a unikernel. Really? Okay. So it, it, that almost sounded like you know, so you're really down into to unitasking with this unit kernel, but you can do things as complex as a full-blown SQL Server. Yeah. Now, one of the things I've liked about unikernels has been the security aspect of it. Your attack service goes way down when you use unikernels. Yep. What are your thoughts there? Yeah. So we kind of turn traditional security on its head, and I, I have a security background, and that's what originally attracted me to unikernels was the security aspect. And the deal is, is like these things are only running a single application per VM. We don't even have the system calls to run other applications. Okay. And so as an attacker, we're completely taking away the incentive for you to do anything. Because attackers don't care about exploits. Exploits are just the keys to your servers. It's They want to run their code on your server, and if they can't do that, What's the deal with attacking? Going back to nano VMs and what you guys do. So you're helping me create a unikernel. Are you also helping me deploy them, or are you? Yeah. So, so you see this uh, kind of single pane of glass that we also kind of created to help orchestrate them. Um, at the end of the day, each program will become a unikernel, and so having to juggle all of them and put them in the right VLAN and do all that sort of stuff is a little bit different than what people are used to doing. Okay. Uh, now, a lot of folks in the unikernel space, their products are open source with a commercial variant. Are you like that? Are you all commercial? You know, we're actually all proprietary right now. Um, certain market uh, things that we've seen over the past year or two kind of led us down this path. Right now, we're not really even selling to startups. We sell to mid-market enterprise-facing people. Okay. So that's uh, that's kind of the route that we took. So for folks that want to find out more about NanoVMs, where would you send them? Uh, NanoVMs.com. Perfect. Thank you, Ian. Thanks.